remaining dwarves removed themselves from the battlefield. Carrie approached the mausoleum. The foolish Bretonians thought their lady would keep the necromancer buried inside forever, but her vampiric magics proved too strong for their weakened protections. As the door opened, Craxius the Decayer emerged, feeling the light of the world on his face for the first time in decades. Craxius approached Gary and bowed to her slightly, noticing the large tomb prince Samta approaching as well. You have revived me, Lady Vampire. I can only assume you have need of my services, Craxus asked. Indeed, you are here to assist myself and Prince Samta in the reclamation of the lands lost so long ago. Once accomplished, you are free to do as you wish. However, I shall be putting you to task immediately. Indeed, my lady. My services are yours. Excellent. There is a chaos spellcaster in the area. He is odd, even by human standards, but he seems to be a collector of rare antiquities and items of power. He possesses a gem imbued by an ancient vampire who walked the lands here. I wish to remove that item from his possession. Prince Samta and I are needed to keep the Dawi at bay here so you can acquire this for me. As you wish, Lady Vampire. I require a few of the dead beards and one of your chariots, my prince. I believe with those items plus a few other troops I shall be able to retrieve this gem for you. This is the first of many tasks I have for you, Craxius. Serve me well, and you shall be rewarded. Fail me, and an eternity within a Bretonian crypt will be the least of your worries. So we got a pretty simple mission here. Uh, it is going to be a standard battle line. However, each of us have a secondary mission we're attempting to... Uh, handle. Skip is attempting to unlock the Dark Acolyte power, and for him to do that, he has to recover the gem that was mentioned in the intro um, by getting one of his non-scouting units off of my side of the board before the game ends. Uh, I have to... I am attempting to unlock uh, Galgar the uh, Pestilent, a new Nurgle character uh, with the lore of Nurgle, and to do that I have to get to the swamp that's on his side behind his lines. I have to put a unit in that swamp, and it counts as a mystery swamp, and voluntarily kill a model uh, to sacrifice them to Nurgle. So if I do that I unlock my character, if he gets a unit off my side of the board before the end of the game, he gets his Dark Acolyte power. Um, so pretty simple, let's go ahead and get into deployment. So starting on the left, the uh, Tomb Kings have three snake surfers. I know they don't have their guys on top of them, but uh, they will be snake surfers. Um, then on the other side of the forest, he has 14 skeletal archers standing guard in front of the Mystery Swamp. Then he has three Boshopti, a single rank of 10 skeletal archers. Behind them is like 30 or so skeletal spearmen with his level 2 necromancer and a necrotect in there. Then there is the uh, casket of souls behind the archers. Then on this side he has the catapult up on the hill. And his last drop was the skeleton horseman. And I thought they were going to come in like on my flank. But I had forgotten about his mission, so he, he really kind of gets me on deployment here, puts those guys there, and they're just going to run like hell for the other end of the board so he can get his mission accomplished. So for me, I start with a Gorbis Chariot, a unit of three trolls. Behind them are my 15 Warriors of Corn with additional hand weapons, and Argus the Moor, my BSB. Next to that is Keldrian the Unhinged on my new Lava Rock base that my wife made me because he broke, so that looks super excellent, and I'm very happy to have him back on the board. Oh, and I should mention he is on Lord Zinch this time because I'm giving it a try. Then I have three trolls, a, three more trolls, and then three dragon ogres with great weapons uh, on my other flank. And of course with vanguards, uh, he moves up the skeletal horsemen to start running. 
<laughs> and even at this point, I haven't quite realized what he's doing. Uh, it's not until he just runs them straight forward on his first turn that I was like, oh yeah, that's really smarter than I <laughs> than I expected. Uh, so he, he definitely gets the drop on me in terms of ease of mission, I think. So I actually get the f roll for the first turn. Dragon Ogres come up like crazy. I'm hoping to charge those archers next turn, hit them and overrun into the casket before it can do too much damage. Uh, the trolls move forward and loot the forest, which turns out to be the blood forest. So if he casts spells on me, um, I'll it'll hit me and then move off. And Keldrian moves up just to keep those trolls within range. Uh, then over here, my trolls in the middle, even leadership eight reroll failed. Their stupid check, they stumbled for three inches and the warriors just followed them. And my Gorby's Chariot on the side comes up to uh, get closer. He, My ultimate plan originally was to just hit the archers, blow through them, and get into the forest and just sacrifice the chariot. Because uh, I figured I could do that quicker. But we'll see how that ultimately ends up turning out. Um, so I get magic off. I have the... Zinch spell that acts like a bolt thrower. I hit the Boshopti and inflict a single wound on one of the Boshopti. And to make matters worse, they succeed their toughness check and now have regen six up, which becomes five up thanks to the Necrotect being right there next to them. Then he goes and runs his horsemen straight up the line, and this is when I was like, oh crap, now I literally have no way of stopping you from getting that mission. So as long as the game goes on five turns, I think five turns is what he needs to make it to four or five turns to make it across the table. So that's pretty much going to be an easy give me mission for him. So magic is nothing. During shooting phase, he tries to drop this flaming skull on my trolls and it drifts off. Then those 10 archers shoot the trolls and end up killing one of them <laughs> because He's rolling like a boss, and I can't roll a regen save to save my life. Literally. So, my next turn starts with the Dragon Ogres charging these Skeleton Archers, and I'm easily going to take them, but I made a miscalculation. With the way I have to maximize along that line, I'm actually going to clip his Skeleton Warriors instead of going into the casket, so I'm going to have to fight them. They'll close to me, and it'll kind of mess up his lines, but I'm not able to get into the casket, and that's bad. And then over here, I don't have any problems with stupidity, so everything goes forward. Uh, the three trolls on the left are heading for the, his Boshopti. The two on the right are basically at a point now where that if that dragon ogre fight goes away, I can either get into the casket or the catapult. Uh, and everybody else just moves up because I want to get close enough to do bad things. I have glean magic, so I want my wizard to be within 18 inches of his, and we'll see how that works out. So my magic pretty much fails. I've got no shooting, so we go into combat. Uh, because they get to strike first, the freaking skeleton archers actually put a wound on my dragon ogres <laughs> before I kill them. Uh, I kill them, do my overrun, I get to here, and because of where the Oshapti are, uh, I he has to close to me. Um, so he does that, which on the plus side is going to open up my trolls to hit the casket. Um, and I'm pretty confident here. Um, so we, we go into his turn, he charges the Boshopti into my chariot, gets it easily, uh, needs a 12 to get the snake surfers into the flank of the chariot, rolls an 11. Um, so he goes deep into the forest, which turns out to be a poison forest, which inflicts one dangerous terrain wound on him. And he continues to run his horsemen for the border. During his shooting, the catapult drifts off again. Uh, his 14 guys can't do any wounds to the trolls, and he gets the casket off on my general. My general succeeds his leadership rule, then it bounces over to the warriors, who only fail by one, so one warrior dies, and it stops bouncing after that. So we go into combat, uh, he ends up not doing any wounds to my chariot. I do enough to kill one of the Boshopti, but the... It already had some wounds on it, so really all it ended up being is he lost by one. And because he's a construct, he takes no further crumble from that. And then over here, the Dragon Ogres, I think they take one more wound, but uh, I kill his Necromancer and do enough damage to the Spearman unit that after crumble, they've only got like half the unit left. 
because I just, I mean, I just crushed him. Um, and that unit's going to evaporate pretty quickly after the, at this point. So we go to my next turn. Trolls charge the casket. Trolls also get into the flank of the spearman unit. Then over on this side of things, the warriors slam into the flank of the Boshapti, and Keldrian moves to the side so that he's within the flank of those snake surfers, and I'm going to try and bolt throw her down the line and take those guys out. So my magic completely fails, so we go into combat, and because the uh, casket is a war machine, I hit it. At, was able to hit it at a funky angle, so I kill it. Uh, he does nothing to my trolls. Uh, and then, oh no, he, he, I kill it, he did nothing to the trolls, but when it exploded, it killed one of the trolls. So the one remaining troll overruns and catches the flank of the spearman here. Then, just for some variation, I jump over here. Easily, the warriors destroy the, the Ushapti, and after the, uh, the chariot reforms, the warriors have to overrun. They overrun to this point so that they're basically going to take a frontal charge from the snakes, which I'm okay with because I it may be only strength four, but I have a crap ton of attacks in this unit, and I, I think I can take them. Uh, then over here, yeah, the trolls and the dragon ogres just absolutely evaporate that spearman unit and they end up reforming like so the trolls are going to head into the swamp and perform the sacrifice i need and the last the single troll and the dragon ogres are turning to look up the hill at the catapult so we go into tomb king's turn he obviously sends the snake surfers charging straight at my warriors which again i'm i'm pretty okay with and his bowmen reform just a little bit, so they're staring straight at either the trolls or the or Keldrian. I think he tries to pop off a few shots at Keldrian, but nothing really happens. So we go into my turn. I actually forgot to take a picture of the fight with the snake surfers. Um, needless to say, snake surfers hit the warriors. The warriors just absolutely obliterate them before they get to go. I destroyed the whole unit and uh, reformed to face these skeleton bowmen. But start of my turn, trolls go into the swamp. They sacrifice one of their own to unlock my mission, and then they succeeded their initiative one initiative check not to die from the swamp, which is awesome. Uh, then the chariot turns around here and comes into the edge of the forest so that I can loot and get a little bit of money. And I did charge both of these units at the uh, catapult. Trolls hit first, then the dragon ogres hit, which made the trolls drop out. So it's dragon ogres versus uh, catapult at this point. And at this point, Keldrian felt like he wanted to get in some, so he and the warriors charges charge the front of the bowmen. Now I know I showed that remaining move stuff beforehand. Uh, I had. Did it in the right order, I just forgot to take a picture of the charges, so I did those afterwards and didn't bother rearranging them. And during combat, obviously the dragon ogres smoke the catapult and turn around and pose. And then over here, obviously, those 14 skeleton archers cannot stand against the might of chaos, and they are absolutely obliterated. But then at the top of the Tomb King's turn, they run their... Skeletons or skeleton horsemen off the board to succeed his mission and end the game. As the last of the undead were broken apart, Keldrian looked to the feeded swamp where his trolls stood. Despite their lack of intelligence, the trolls had followed his instructions and drowned one of their fellows in the poisoned waters. And the bubbling of black water told Keldrian that Nurgle had accepted his offering. Suddenly, the surface of the water broke and a pockmarked humanoid form rose from the water. Supported by a huge, twisted, horse-like beast, the diseased form was revealed as Galgar the Pestilent, a powerful servant of the Plague God. Keldrian moved before him. Galgar, I have appealed to the Grandfather Nurgle to return you to this world. Now you shall join me in my revels in these lands. The diseased figure smiled broadly. <laughs> Father Nurgle is pleased with you, Keldrian, and I'm honored to be invited to your dance. 
Keldrian joined Galgar in his laughter. Then let us go! These fools have yet to feel the true blessings of the brother gods. <coughs> it is time to rectify this. As the forces marched away, the mirthful laughter echoed through the land, promising chaos and death to all that heard them. So, all in all, a very good game for the Warriors of Chaos. Uh, I gained 11 gold pieces. I succeeded my mission, so I unlocked Galgar the Pestilent, who is going to be a uh, Nurgle Chaos Sorcerer on a Demonic Mount. And I also, for winning the game, gained Under a Proud Standard, which means I got a D6 times 10 in gold pieces that could be neatly be spent on one magical standard. And I ended up maxing that roll, so I have to choose a 60-point magic standard for the Warriors of Chaos to add to their army. I haven't made that decision yet. Uh, I'm not really sure what I want to go with, so if anybody has any suggestions, I would totally be willing to hear them. So, all in all, excellent game. Uh, though my opponent uh, did say that it was all a diversion just so he could unlock this mission. So <laughs> I think he specifically gave me an easy one here. Although that may just be him talking. So the Tomb Kings had a rough game. Um, but if you believe what Skip says, the whole par point of this game was to get the Dark Acolyte power, which he did succeed in doing by getting his Skeletal Horseman off the board. So I think he counts this one as a win. Um, beyond that, because he lost the game, he did end up getting the uh, low morale, which is weird, because it just means he'll be at minus one leadership, so big whoop. Uh, so he really didn't make off too badly in this one. Uh, all in all, it was a fun game. I I'm not sure how seriously Skip built this list, so I I it's hard to give me any or give him any advice. Um, Bow shop de suck. They I think that's just kind of a general accepted. Uh, thing. It doesn't stop him from fielding them, and frankly, it won't stop me from fielding them with my undead, so it uh, should be fun. Uh, I definitely, with uh, the new character unlocked, I'm going to try some very, very different builds and, and different units. Um, just to give an idea, I've actually got the pieces from Remington Steel to help me convert some Marauders into Forsaken, so that's kind of where I'm going. Uh, we'll see how well that works out, but... Um, all in all, it was a fun game. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, we will catch you on the next one.